here at Chestnut Grove Independent Church. Uh, we appreciate you stopping in this afternoon and uh, sharing this momentous day for both Morgan and for Ryan. Uh, with everything that's been going on in our world and uh, us really being kind of shut in and shut down, uh, it's time, I know we're taking precautions, but it's time to live again. The Lord expects us to do that and get out. And it's great that you're able to be here today and be part of this. I know that there are some that are not. Uh, and we're so glad that you're able to join us on our live stream also for those that could not be here in person and be part of this service also. I'm Pastor Joe Spack, as, and some of you know, maybe some of you do not, just want to introduce myself. Uh, and certainly Morgan and Ryan and everyone else, the families, are so thankful that you came here today to share in this, this wonderful occasion. Uh, so as we start our time together, uh, dear friends, we are assembled here in the sight of God in the presence of these witnesses to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is a very honorable estate that was instituted of God, and it was adorned by the Lord Jesus Christ as he did his first miracle when he turned the water into wine at the wedding in Cana. And also the Apostle Paul commends it greatly throughout his epistles. So this is something that is not to be entered into lightly, but is to be taken very seriously, the step that any man and woman makes becoming husband and wife. That's why God said it when he when both Adam and Eve uh, were in the Garden of Eden, God says in Genesis that God saw that it was not good for man to live alone. And so he created a woman and he gave her to man to be his companion, to be his wife and his helpmate. And for this cause shall a man leave his mother and his father and cleave unto his wife, and the two of them shall become one flesh. Who gives this woman to be wed? Her mother and I. You may be seated. They told me her dress had puff. It has a lot of puff. It's okay. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. All right. Well, here we are, you two. On Saturday afternoon, about 20 to 3 right now, uh, gathered together, as I said here, um, you two have been waiting for this moment uh, for quite a while, uh, and it's so great that this day has finally arrived, and as I said, just that everything happened the way it did, that we were able to go green, and many more people were able to be here, uh, even though some could not, that so many could. I, I want to talk to you today uh, out of God's Word. I always do that at any wedding any time that I speak to people because I have nothing for you outside of God and what his wisdom and his direction is. And I was thinking uh, as you're coming together today, I wanted to present to you instead of maybe just one portion of scripture that often we might do as pastors or ministers and use that with regards to a, a ceremony such as this. Uh, also what we do, what I decided to do today was just to give you some um, direction from God's word. And the first five things that I'm going to present to you are all action because they're verbs. Really important. Uh, you're starting today. You're going to be married here shortly and joined together. Uh, marriage is always work. It never grows. It never prospers on its own. So it, it's going to take action on both of your parts to make your wedding or make your marriage, excuse me, from this point forward continue to grow and to honor and to glorify God. And so there's just several things that are going to be really important. Uh, and one of the things is, as, as I ha hear from God's word, is this, that I wanted to encourage you with, is this, that as you two go through life, make sure that you draw near to God. That you draw near to God. That's going to take you to do that. In the book of James, in chapter 4, in verse 8, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And so one of the things that you're going to have to do, both of you, is you're going to have to make that effort to draw near to God. And it's important that you'll do that. That's an action. It won't just happen on its own. God wants to be as close as he can and be a big part of both of your lives and your marriage. But unless you take that time together to draw near to God, that's why that was written in James. And given that instruction, once again, one of those things you're going to have to act upon. You're going to have to draw near to God. And some people may say, well, how do we draw near to God? 
Well, one of the ways that we do it, and I believe the most important way, is exa reading exactly what I have in my hand today, God's Word. If you want to draw near to God, the best way to do that is to read God's Holy Word. Throughout my time, and I don't want to say there have been many, but the times that couples have come, or people even outside of couples for counseling, and they've come to me and said, Pastor, I just don't feel like God's real close right now in my life. It feels like He's distant. It feels like I don't know if God's as close as what I want Him to be. And I always give the same instruction. I always say to them, are you reading your Bible? And often those people will have to comment and say, maybe not as much as I should be. See, when God wants us to draw near to Him, and the way that we draw near to God is by reading His Word. God speaks to us through His written Word and through His Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. And so, when you're going to take those steps to draw near to God... The most important way to do it, yes, worship services, going to a church service and praying together, but read God's Word. I, I know many people have Bibles in their homes, but it's very few that open them and read them on a consistent basis, and yet they get confused and they can't understand why it seems like God is so distant and God is so far away. And I would encourage them or any you two today and anyone, that's the way that you'll draw near to God. In other words, read the Scriptures. In the book of Psalms, the psalmist wrote this with regards to God's word. He wrote, how sweet are your words, Lord. They are like honey from the honeycomb. And I love that language. It's very expressive, talking about how the bees strive to work. And in the honeycomb, they go out and they get the nectar and the pollen out of the flowers. And then they come back and they're in the honeycomb and they make it into honey. And we love to consume honey. I mean, many people like honey or things that have that honey. And the psalmist recognizes and said, look, God's word should be that way to us. It should be that whenever we are hungry, we should open God's Word and we can draw near to God when we read the Scriptures. That's the way God's Word should be for each and, each and every one of us that know the Lord. So first of all, draw near to God. But second of all, read, read the Scriptures. And it's going to take, take time upon uh, effort on both of your parts. The third thing, real easy, serve. Serve. Now... I, I thought about this one as we were coming, and boy, you, you have great examples, don't you? As we're going to be coming together today, I mean, Morgan, you have your, your, your dad that served in the military, your grandfather that served in the military, your uncle that serves in the military, your dad is a volunteer fireman, your grandpa, and your brother. Ryan, your dad is in the state police and serves in that way. You right now are taking upon to serve this country, you and many of your friends here. And so you've had great examples in your life what it is to serve. At times the sacrifice that it takes to serve, whether it's in the military, whether it's as a fireman, going to those buildings, whatever it is. And so your families and those around you and your friends and those people associated with you, they have given you examples of what it is to serve. And that is so important in any marriage as a married couple before God that you will serve God in a way that is pleasing to God, in the way that God wants you to do. In the book of Philippians, in chapter 2, in verses 1 through 5, the Apostle Paul wrote these words, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others, and let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And so as Paul is uh, writing there, and he is giving instruction not only to the people in Philippi, the, the Philippians, but he's giving instructions to both of you today and to all of us that hear these words. God's pattern is always this. It's, it's the most important thing that I tell any married couple. God is first. Period. Bottom line. Ryan Morgan is not first, and Morgan Ryan is not first in your life. You're important to each other. You will be. You're getting married. You'll be a husband and wife. But God has a plan. You make God first in your life. And then before you even show interest in yourselves next, you know what you're supposed to do? Show interest in each other. So the pattern is always God, each other, and then yourself last. Often people can get mixed up and tangled up because even in the midst of a marriage, a husband and wife, instead of putting their husband or wife before themselves, it's more they're concerned about themselves. 
And God knows what he's talking about. He's giving instruction. And when you follow that pattern in serving, when you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, when you serve God, and then you look to make sure that you serve each other first. In other words, maybe you want to do something that you might say, well, what can I do for Morgan? What, what would be good for me to help Morgan? Or Morgan, what can I do for Ryan? Or how can I help Ryan? What that will do, and, and it just happens naturally, is this. Because you will realize how much you love each other and you're acting in that way. So you know what will happen then? Th that'll be reciprocated to each other. See, God's, his wisdom is amazing. And he knows what to do. So first of all, you're going to need to draw near to God. You're going to do that by reading the scriptures. And you're going to have to serve the Lord, first and foremost. That, that's God's directive for any of us that are in a relationship. After that, not only that, you're going to have to build. Building takes action. Building takes effort. A house is not built on its own, a physical home. Uh, you have to lay the mortar and lay the foundation and the bricks and whatever it is, or a contractor comes in, and a marriage is no different. You're starting this afternoon when you join together as a husband and wife, you're laying the foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ of your marriage. And from this point forward, your marriage, God intends for you to build it up, for it to grow. And it's important. That's going to take effort. Marriage is hard work. Ask your parents, ask anybody that's been married for a while. I don't know any couple that's ever been married and they just sit back and say, everything's good from now on until, you know, I, I, I close my eyes. It just doesn't happen that way. You're going to scrap, you're going to fight, you're going to have arguments. You probably already have, I'm sure. We talked about that, and that's okay. All couples do that. But you work through those. And what you do in that whole time is you're building and you're realizing the steps that you're taking are going to help you to build your marriage. And it's going to glorify God. And God's going to bless your marriage because of that when you do it that way. So you want to make sure that you build your marriage. How do you do that? If I'm encouraging you today or God wants you to do that, just what we've been talking about. Yes, by God's word, but by his wisdom. In Proverbs in chapter 2, in verses 1 through 4, God's word says this, my son, or daughter, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom, God's talking about his written word, and you apply your heart to understanding, and yes, if you cry out for discernment and you lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek wisdom as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and you will find the knowledge of God. So I wanted this all to tie together because... You're going to have to draw near to God. You're going to do that, of course, by reading the scriptures. You're going to do that by serving God, but also by building your marriage. And you're going to build your marriage on the commands and on the instruction of God. That's the best way for any couple, any people that are here today out there, to build your marriage on God's word. Because when you do that, God blesses you. And then the last part of the verbs that I wanted to say is this. Brings it all together. Pray. Pray for each other. It's going to be so important. Uh, you two are going to be really relying on each other quite a bit. And I say that just because you're going to be moving down to Mississippi, of course. And for all these years, you've been next to your family. You've been around your parents. You've been around your grandparents. You've been around your friends. And the two of you are going to be stationed, and you're going to be by yourself. I know there's video and all of that. And you today capable of what was not capable many years ago. But still, you'll be removed physically from your family. And, and you're going to need each other in a great way. You're going to be, need to be praying for each other and lifting each other up. Pray for your marriage. Pray that God will watch over it and his hand will be upon it. And if you take those first steps that I, I offered today, and I didn't offer them, God did, but I, I showed to you or shared with you out of God's word, if you do that and pray to, to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ to help you, God will help you to build your marriage and you'll draw near to him and you pray for your marriage and you'll see God do wonderful and great things in your marriage as a husband and wife. So make sure that you pray for each other, for harmony and for unity. And then in the midst of all of that, the very last thing, and really I was started this yesterday afternoon, and this isn't so much a verb, but it's more of what will take place within your marriage. And I'll say this word again today and everybody will laugh. Memories. Memories. Because that's what our marriages are. As you grow old together and, and as you have, you know, in the future, your family and everything that's involved and wherever you might be stationed and wherever you move and your interactions with people, all of those become memories. I, I said that yesterday afternoon and I told you about what wedding and it was a memorable thing. Well, just last night, you know, one of Ryan, one of your groomsmen, Lake, left a great memory. 
As we were waiting to come in, there was a yellow jacket in the hall. Everybody was cowering down, just let it alone, Ryan said. Let it alone, it'll be fine, it'll be dead tomorrow. Blake says, no, we'll kill it. He's jumping and he's slapping and he's smacking at it until he finally knocked it on the floor and stepped on it and killed it. Now, they'll be talking about that for years to come. That's a memory. There was a memory made last night at the rehearsal dinner. There was. And that's okay. And even when they end up being difficulties or problems, smile about them. They're nothing to lose sleep over. Within a day or two, they're gone and something else comes along and you look back and you laugh about it and you say, you know what, that's a memory. Today, this will be a memory for you, for your family, for me, for all the people here. It'll start that memory of the day that you're joined together as a husband and wife. So you have memories up to this point, yes, but today when you're joined together... You'll be starting as a husband and wife, and you'll have those memories as a couple from this point forward. And 20, 30 years will go by very quickly, and one day, many people that are here today, and probably me in that many years from now, won't be here anymore. And you'll be sitting around like we were last night saying, boy, time went fast, and do you remember this, and do you remember that, and do you remember that? That's just how our lives go. So draw near to God. Read God's Word. Serve God. And build your marriage on the truth and the wisdom of God's word. And pray for each other. And pray for unity. And pray that God will watch over you together as a couple as you grow together. And through that whole time, you'll be creating memories. And that's what God wants us to do. So, so that's what I have for you. So at this point in time, uh, Ryan and Morgan are going to come forward and tie a knot. And we have a song, Please Listen to the Words. It's about three minutes, so they're going to do that. But they're going to start that song, and they'll come forward and do that.
You can stay there. I won't make you move much, okay? I know it's tough in that dress. You stand right there, okay? So not a problem at all. So uh, in case some of you did not know, uh, that was Ryan's mom, Heidi. She wanted to sing that live but didn't know if she'd be able to sing it live so she recorded it and we interjected it there and she's shaking her head no she knows she couldn't have done it so um and she has a beautiful voice and certainly a part of a memory of of your service so a great thing to have so all right after of course hearing from the lord and all of those uh together uh, that we are talking about now we come to uh a wonderful part of the service where you will now take your vows and so uh now and so now Ryan Jones and Morgan Smith, Ryan and Morgan, having freely and deliberately and prayerfully chosen each other as partners for life, will you please unite your right hands together? Ryan, you are now going to be entering a relationship that has many privileges, but also it has a lot of obligations. The woman that you love is about to become your wife. In no other way could she tell of her love for you as by her willingness to turn from home and loved ones and friends that are true and tried and to make her home with you. And your joys will be her joys and your sorrows her sorrows. Morgan, you too are entering into a relationship with many privileges and obligations. The man that is before you that you love is about to become your husband. He tells the world not only of his willingness but of his expressed desire to turn from all others and to you for all of the life ahead. Your love will be his inspiration, and your prayers his tower of strength. And so, Ryan, you repeat these words after me. I, Ryan, take you, Morgan. I, Ryan, take you, Morgan. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And I do promise... Before God and these witnesses. And I do promise before God and these witnesses. To be your loving and faithful husband. To be your loving and faithful husband. In easy times and in difficult times. In easy times and in difficult times. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Morgan. Repeat after me. I, Morgan, take you, Ryan. I, Morgan, take you, Ryan, to be my wedded husband, to be my wedded husband, and I do promise before God and these witnesses, and I do promise before God and these witnesses, to be your loving and faithful wife, to be your loving and faithful wife, in easy, in the easy times and in difficult times, in the easy times and in difficult times, in joy and in sorrow, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and health, in sickness and health, as long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. I believe that you have rings for each other. Yes, we do. Okay. Ryan, as you place the ring upon Morgan's fingers, repeat these words after me. This ring I give thee. This ring I give thee. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. And Morgan, you also have a ring for Ryan. And in the same way as you place it upon his finger, repeat these words after me. This ring I give thee. This ring I give thee. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And so now, having, your, having pledged your love for and your loyalty to each other, and having sealed the pledge with the marriage rings, I do by the authority that's vested in me as the minister of the church of the living God, and in conforming with the laws of this state, I do pronounce you husband and wife. And what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Ryan, you may kiss your bride. Let us turn to a word of prayer for our Heavenly Father before I announce the couple today. Dear Father, we thank you for this time that we've had as these two hearts were joined together 
in holy matrimony in the sight of you and all of us as witnesses. Father, we pray that you would add blessings uh, to their homes, Father. And Father, thank you that their hearts have been inspired unto a lasting love and they have said the words that have made them one in the eyes of society and you. Bless them as they turn now to walk in the path of life together. Give them your guidance in every tender and intimate adjustment to living together. Bestow upon them, we pray, the fulfillment of the dreams and the prayers that they have cherished through their days for their love and for their home. Father, remind them that loving you first does not take away from them loving each other. For we know that you, but for we know that loving you but increases our capacity to love those who are dearest to us. For Lord, you are love. So Father, bless the homes from where they have come from, but especially bless the home that they will establish. And may it fulfill your purposes and your will. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I would like to introduce to you for the first time ever, Mr. and Mrs. Ryan and Morgan Jones. Thank you. 